So this is video two, the second half of the test. I already made one video that has questions one through nine, I believe. We're going to pick up right, or actually one through ten. We're starting with numbers eleven and twelve. Um, now, right here on the test, it says for eleven and twelve, graph the following inequalities um, on the answer sheet, the back side. I guess it should say graph the following systems of inequalities because we actually do have systems right here that we need to graph. And it does say that on the instructions on the answer sheet. Graph the following systems of inequalities. So let's take a look at number 11. And we have two inequalities. Are they ready to graph? Yeah. Yes, they are. So the top equation, or the top inequality, I'm going to go in blue. Where does it cross the y-axis? What's the b value? Four. B value is 4. What's the m value? Negative. Negative 3 over 1, if you want to put it over 1. So it does cross at 4 on the y. Now from that point, what do I do? Go down, go down 3. Why down 3? Because it says negative 3 for slope. If it would have been positive, you go up, but it's negative, you go down. So you're going to go down 1, 2, 3, and over 1. You always go to the right when you run. So let's put a dot right there. And you could continue the pattern of going down 3 over 1 and down 3 over 1 to get it all the way across. Now the question is, before I draw my line, is this going to be a solid line or is it going to be a dotted line? Dotted. dotted. So let's put some dots right between these other dots. And there's my uh, line that's dotted. Now the question is, what side are my answers on? Are they on this side or are they on the other side? Now I've been saying go ahead and test the point zero, 00 to see if it works. So if you did plug in 0 for y and 0 for x, it would say 0 is less than 0 plus 4. It would say 0 is less than 4. Is that a true statement? Yes, it is. So you would shade in this side over here. Now let me show you a shortcut if you haven't watched the shortcut video from yesterday. Um, if you just have, if you already have y equals or y by itself, y and the inequality, which it does, it's ready to graph. If you look at this inequality, what does it say? What is that? Less than. And less than in terms of y means below. Greater than in terms of y means above. So when you look at this blue line, what side would you shade in if you want to shade below it? You would shade in this side over here. Does that make sense? So the shortcut is this. If it's ready to graph, if it has y by itself, if this says less than, you're going to have to shade below the line, so you shade in this side. Now, if it would have been greater than, you'd have to shade in above the line. That's the shortcut. You don't have to use a shortcut. You could always go back and test the point zero, 00 if you want. See if it works. If it does work, you shade in that side. If it doesn't work, you shade in the other side. So it's up to you if you want to use a shortcut of understanding the, the inequality or testing the point zero, 00. So let's jump to the other um, inequality. The other one on a graph in red, this one crosses where? Negative three. Negative three. From that point, what's my slope? One over one. one over one. So what do I do? Up one over one, up one over one. Put a dot here, up one over one, and so on and so on. So dot, 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 up one over one. Use that same pattern backwards. And then we decide, is this going to be a solid dot or another dotted a, a solid line or another dotted line? Solid. Solid line right through there. Now, again, it's solid because it has a solid line underneath the inequality. Now we need to shade in either the top part of this red line or the bottom part of this red line. With the shortcut, what would you say? What does this say right here? Greater than. What does that mean? Above or below? That means above. So we are going to shade in the above portion of this red line. So everything up here, whoops, let me see, uh, one second, above. Now again, if you wanted to, you could test 0, 0, and you'll see that it is true. That's why we shade in above. So you could plug in a 0 for x and plug in a uh, 0 for y, and you'd have 0 is greater than negative 3. Uh, which is always true. Zero is greater than any negative number, so that's why we shade in the top. 
I say use the shortcuts or test if you feel uncomfortable. Anyway, what you really want to represent is the overlap piece. So when you're doing this on your test, shade lightly, but once you see where it's overlapping, now it's going to divide it pretty much into four sections. You see this section right here has nothing on it. This triangle down here only has the blue marks. This one up here, this triangle up here from here to here, this triangle up here only has the red marks. Where is the overlap piece? It's right here. So you really shade in, do a dark shade on all this overlap piece. So in order for you to get the right answer, you have to show the right graph. Let's look at number 12. The top equation, I'm going to go in red, it crosses the y-axis at 1. From that point, I go up 1 over 1 because there's no number in front of x. So if you keep going up 1 to the right 1, up 1 to the right 1, you get that line. Extend it the other way, all the way through. And once again, this will be a dotted line. It's not solid. It is dotted because it does not have a solid line underneath it. So we put some dots or some dashes between the dots. And once again, we need to shade in either above or below. So Janissa, what does this say right here? And what does it say? Less than. Less than. All right. So what does less than mean? Above or below? Below. below. So we are going to shade this in below like so. Do it lightly. Let's go for the blue line. Now the blue line has y and a number, so you could go to the y-axis and draw a line right through that number two. Um, you could also look at it in uh, slope intercept form, y equals mx plus b. You just have to realize that there is no x plus the b value of two. So it crosses at two. Now from that point, you don't go up, it's flat. The slope is zero, so that'd be a flat line right through it. And we need to shade in uh, that blue line either above or below. So with the shortcut, that says greater than or equal to, which means what? Above or below? Above. So we just go with the above shading. Now remember, what really matters is the overlap piece. So it's divided into four sections. Here's a triangle right here that has nothing. And here's this portion right here that only has the red shade. Here's this portion right here that only has a blue shade. This one is the overlap, this little triangle slice of the graph. That's where we have to do the really dark shading. Okay? So that's the next two questions on the test. So if we flip the paper back over to the front side and finish this test with these last two word problems, Numbers 13 and 14, Jack has a jar of nickels oh wait, that has nickels and dimes. He has 98 coins in the jar. Total amount of money is in the jar is $7.05. How many dimes are in the jar? Um, so it's specifically asking for dimes. Uh, tomorrow's test, I might ask for nickels. You never know. Um, and it will have some different numbers. So again, you need to create two equations. One equation, we're, we're going to go based off of the number of items. So... What do we have here? Apples and oranges? Adult tickets and child tickets? What do we have here? Nickels and dimes. Nickels and dimes. So we're going to make an equation saying, I don't know how many nickels. I'm going to represent that with N. I don't know how many dimes. Represent that with D. But I know that if I add the amount of nickels with the amount of dimes, I'm going to have this amount of coins. What's the amount of coins? 98 in this case. All right. Now the other uh, equation is going to be based off of what? Cash money. Right? So the other equation is thinking how much money is a nickel worth? Five cents. So we're going to represent that as 0 0.05. N, how much money are dimes worth? 10 cents, so 0 0.10. D, and if I do add the amount of nickels multiplied by however many they are, plus the amount of dimes multiplied by 10, that'll give me my total amount of money which in this case is 705, $7.05. $7 now this is the system that we need to solve. Problem is you need to get rid of those decimals first. So the way to do that technically is to multiply it by 100. You don't even have to show that because all you need to do is move the decimal place over 
two spaces. This one also, two spaces. This one also, two spaces. So my new equation at the bottom is going to be in red. I want to rewrite it as 5n plus 10d equals 705. Now the top equation, n plus d equals 98, all I need to do is manipulate the top one to get something to cancel either n's or d's. So I think canceling out the n's will be kind of easy by multiplying by negative 5. So it's going to give me a new equation above that says negative 5n minus 5d equals negative 5 times 98. We need to do that on a calculator. Negative 490. So now we're going to combine the lines, eliminate a variable. We're going to end up with 5d equals 200, no, 215. Final step would be to solve that one step uh, equation in black right there. Divide by 5, divide by 5. D equals 43. So there's 43 dimes. And guess what? That's what they're asking for. So you'd be done. On your answer page, you just go, how many dimes? 43. Now, again, on tomorrow's test, I might ask for nickels. So if I did ask for nickels, what would you do? You'd take that 43, plug it right in there for dimes, and rewrite your equation. N plus 43 equals 98. And then you would solve it. Subtract 43, subtract 43, cancels, n equals uh, 54. 55. 5, 5, 55, 5, 5, n equals 55. If they ask you for nickels, but they ask you for dimes. So the answer to this one is 43. And one final system, word problem one. A class of students with some adults and parent chaperones and teachers went to the museum. Total of 24 tickets were purchased. So let's make that first equation based on the number of items. So what kind of tickets were purchased? Adult tickets and student tickets. So adult tickets plus student tickets. If we add the number of tickets together, uh, we get a total of how many tickets? 24. Okay, now we don't know exactly if it's 21 adults and three students, or maybe uh, 21 students and three adults, but we are gonna figure that out, how many adults and how many students went based off of this information. Now the second equation is based off of money, again. So each adult ticket costs $12. So you're gonna say 12 times A, because if there's five adult tickets, then that would be $60. 12 times five is 60. Um, but we don't know if it's uh, five adults or three adults or one adult, we don't know that but we do know that $12 for each adult ticket. So now we're gonna also do the plus, the student tickets cost $7, so we're gonna go seven times S. And we do know that the total amount of money spent was 233. Please make sure you change that, it was a typo when I made this test, I'm sorry. 233 down there. Anyhow, now you have the system, now you want something to eliminate. So. I personally would choose to eliminate students because it looks a little easier to eliminate students. How would I eliminate students by getting this S to become a negative 7S so it'll cancel with the positive 7S? So I'm going to multiply the top equation by negative 7. My new equation on top will be negative 7A. It'll be uh, minus 7S equals negative 168. Now the bottom equation, we're just gonna leave the same. 12a plus 7s equals 233. Now it's ready to combine the lines, eliminate the s's. 12 take away seven, that's five of those a's, equals 168 subtracted from 233. I'm using a calculator, so should you. 233, let me see, 233 take away 168 is 65. So that's your simple one-step equation. Divide by 5, divide by 5. A equals 13. So since 
they asked for how many adults are on this trip, that would be your answer on the answer sheet, 13 adults. But just in case, maybe tomorrow I don't ask for adults, maybe I ask for students, that's when you take your 13 adults, plug them back into the original, and say 13 plus s equals 24. 13 plus s equals 24. So we could find out how many students actually went by subtracting 13 on both sides. And we would get uh, 11. So s equals 11. 11 student tickets. If they asked for students, 11 students went, 13 parents went, or 13 adults went. OK, um, that's it. But then again, on the test, I'm going to give you another free point, just like on the other one, number 17. How do you prepare for this test? Answer honestly. Get a free point. Multiple choices on the back side. So on the back side, you'll see this question with a multiple choice. And hopefully, you guys don't check A tomorrow. Hopefully, you don't do B either. Hopefully, you, stud you study a lot and you watched lots of videos, right, on YouTube or on Edmodo. You have everything you need. The only other thing you need is ganas to study and ace this thing. Remember, tomorrow's test, if you get an A, I'll go back and change every grade up until this point to an A. You could have a solid A in algebra. Crazy. Good luck.